Thank you. Have you ever wondered if there is a certain reason why life pushes you in a certain direction? Anyone? Have you thought of why life brings you towards certain situations, certain people, what the purpose of your life may be? Today's theme is mosaic, and I like to believe that each individual life is like a mosaic painting. We all have little fragments that make us who we are. And every single day, we get a new piece of mosaic, a new opportunity to change the painting and to make our lives what we want. So let me take you through the mosaic of my life. First and foremost, the most glittering piece, the jewel of my painting is the family that I was born into. I was extremely fortunate because I belong to a family of eight generations of musicians, and um, I am the eighth generation. Thank you. I was blessed to receive excellent tutelage uh, at the age of three from my mother, Dr. Sangeeta Shankar, and grandmother, Padma Bhushan, Dr. N. Rajam. My father is a chemical engineer, but also a very talented singer and was a very supportive figure in my life. And right from childhood, uh, for my sister and me, my elder sister Ragini and me, the importance of practice, discipline, the importance of practice, discipline, and determination was paramount. I always felt like my life was a little different because other parents would tell their children to study and mine would tell me to practice. I performed first when I was uh, eight. I started learning when I was three and I toured the world right from when I was eight. And that exposed me to so many different perspectives in life. And I think that shapes uh, a big part of who I am today. So the music that I perform, I'm a Hindustani classical violinist, a North Indian classical violinist. And what I do on the violin is an expression of the technique Gaiki Ang. So the Gaiki Ang is a technique where the violin sounds like a human voice. How can the violin sound like a human voice? So my grandmother was the pioneer of the Gaiki Ang in Hindustani music. She's changed the face of how it looks today. And I have been blessed enough to learn that technique from her, my mother. So uh, actually, let's just get straight to music. Yeah? Right? How do I make the same emotion come out of my violin? Does that sound like the vocal style? Thank you so much. You guys are such a wonderful audience. <laughs> so that was a little about Gaiki Ang. Of course, this technique can be applied to khayal, thumri, ghazal, any form of music, even Bollywood. You know, you name it. If the voice can sing it, the violin can play it. Apart from music, there were many other things that I learned. My mother ensured that I learned swimming, cycling, driving, cooking, martial arts, a host of other things. And also musically, I learned singing. You heard a little bit of it earlier. I learned something called kunakol. Any South Indians in the house? Kunakol, <laughs> kunakol is basically a system of uh, vocal percussion. 
that they use in this out just a small demonstration of what it sounds like um it goes ta din ta ta din ta ta din ta din ta ta din ta din gena ta ta din ta ta din ta ta din ta din ta ta din ta ta din gena ta ta din ta ta din ta ta din ta din ta ta din ta ta din ta ta din gena ta ta din ta ta din ta din gena ta ta din ta ta din ta ta din gena ta ta din ta ta din ta ta din gena ta ta din ta din gena ta ta din ta ta din gena ta ta din ta ta din gena 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 So for all you engineers in the house, I don't know. It's just a conception that all engineers like math, but this has a lot of math. It's very intellectually stimulating. So this was the culmination when I was about 12, 13, 14. All my little mosaic pieces, learning music, learning various other skills, and I was performing with that. That's how my painting looked back then. And let's come to studies, right? So being from a South Indian family myself, studying was very important. <laughs> and um, luckily I was one of those people who got away with studying in the last moment any anyone can relate with that <laughs> i think the whole college pretty much so i i always thought that i would take engineering all my life and suddenly the last two days i decided no let me go for chartered accountancy because it will give me more time in life whenever i say this in a room full of chartered accountants they always laugh at me <laughs> because uh, it's probably one of the most grueling courses those four years taught me a lot when i was pursuing my chartered accountancy because i was managing my musical practice my concerts i did my bachelor's degree in commerce uh, which was correspondence no college life i had ca classes i had my internship and i had exams to study for and that was the time i was just leaving my teens and entering the real world and um, understanding how to deal with obstacles problems it was a year of a lot of learning but somehow uh, in august 2016 i cleared my final exam the first attempt and i was joyful and elated and extremely happy <laughs> and then there was the enormous question do i do music do i do ca do i do something that i've spent 20 years of my life in or something that's practically impossible to clear which i just got so i decided to have my cake and eat it too and i think we all know that doesn't last very long i worked as an investment advisor uh, with a bank for 6 months at the same time as i completed my masters in music and i used to perform over the weekends 6 months down the line i used to look at my uh, superior and see that he was the first person to come to office and the last person to leave office and uh, while i did not mind the hard work i chose music because you know music has the power has a very deep power within it we all feel it and classical music has a spiritual aspect of it and if i have been chosen to be the vehicle that can convey that beauty that that surreal experience to the listeners then why not so i took the plunge i resigned from my job at a time when i had no concerts on my calendar and in the one month notice period my calendar got booked out for the next four months for concerts <laughs> after i quit my job i uh, taught in a film school i taught indian music and composition i made a lot of friends in the music industry and uh, friendships always lead to doing something together right if you are two bookworms that come together you like to discuss books that you like so two people who love to make music when they come together they want to make music together and my friends were from different genres of music not all of them were classical musicians and that is how i got into fusion music it was not a conscious decision but more a consequence so basically fusion music is something where you mix two genres it becomes like a fusion of things and now it is more known as indian classical plus some other genre so one of these friends was not then but now my husband mahesh raghavan who is a carnatic music sensation as you all know and i used to bug him you know i used to ask him a lot of questions that um uh, uh how do you do this how do you do that because he was technologically an expert in music and here i was just a live performer all my life so i learned a lot 
and in the process of learning and all those discussions, we created a piece of music called the Kapi Dance. <laughs> this is where I was at my mosaic three years ago with the culmination of all my skills at that point of time. And in 2020, something major happened. Um, Universal Music Group, which is one of the biggest labels in the world, UMG USA, they reached out to my sister and me, my sister Ragini and me, and signed us for an album. Every musician's dream, you know? And... Uh, <laughs> so Ragini and I, we composed 11 original tracks, and my husband Mahesh, he produced the album, and we have a host of very talented musicians. Now you will see the culmination of everything. You know, you'll see the culmination of music, classical music, fusion, kunakol, and the influence of all the different genres that I had exposure to. And uh, what about CA? How does it fit in the mosaic painting? Well, when you're in business with a music label from abroad, there is a lot of legality and finances involved. And I do see a lot of surprise faces whenever in meetings they talk about uh, contracts and financial terms and they see that oh my god she understands everything and can answer and I truly believe that me studying chartered accountancy enables me to live a life as a musician while being financially efficient so thank you that is what I love about fusion music it can never be a replacement for classical music but it definitely brings people closer to our roots and opens a window into classical music and I think more than ever now with the advent of social media with the advent of YouTube the youth all of us we are discovering more and more types of music it's not just one genre like it was 10-15 years ago that we would listen to so I think that's a great thing and uh, I think I would like to end my talk by saying that you know, life is like a river and uh, you either flow with it or you fight with it. I remember in 2015, I remember as an understatement, it's one of the defining moments of my life. In 2015, I was in Ladakh, another Ladakh story for all of you. <laughs> and on my insistence, the adventure enthusiast, I took my whole family river rafting on the Zanskar River. And uh, in one of the rapids, the raft almost toppled and I fell into the water. The water was three or four degrees cold and the rapid was intense. For five minutes, I could barely breathe. The water was tossing me, turning me, pushing me inside, bringing me up on the surface. And whenever it brought me up on the surface, for that split second, I would take as big a breath as I could. Because after that split second, the water would push me inside again and I didn't know when it would push me back up again. So this went on for five minutes. It was a near life and death experience. But it taught me a lot, you know. I mean, you flow with whatever life takes you. Life is like a mosaic painting. Every day there's a glittering stone that comes from above. And you get the opportunity to change whatever you are every today. And I think what I want for myself is for my painting to never stay the same today or tomorrow. I want it to look drastically different 10 years later. And why is that? Because the moment you identify with one painting, the moment you say, this is who I am, there is where your growth stops, your learning stops, you're too much within your comfort zone. So can you do that for yourself? Can you let each day teach you, make you grow? Because that is the lesson that I want to learn for myself, to be with the flow, to accept, to learn, to grow, to love, and to enjoy life for what it is. Thank you for being such an amazing audience. I enjoyed my talk a lot. Thank you.